Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Well, this week we'd like to add an air of class to the show. Okay, so we'll have some class. Randy Thomas will be our guest. As a matter of fact, this is Randy's first appearance on eWebs, and we'd like to welcome her to the show. She's going to be great. Talk about the award shows she does and, of course, all the other work that she's involved with. That's right, including her program coming up in November, called it November to Remember, which she's producing down in her hometown of Fort Myers, Florida. Cool. I'll have video highlights from the AES show, which is the geekiest audio show in the world. And I'll have the coolest stuff that you guys in voiceover might care about, just like I do every year. And in my tip of the week, we'll talk about something everybody talks about, normalization. What's right, what's wrong? We'll tell you about it. That's East West Audio Body Shop, 9 o'clock in the East. And 6 o'clock in the West. And join us in the chat room. We'll see all of you there. He's the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia Tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and the home studio master, hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen, and the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica and his penthouse studio in Buffalo, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, world. I'd say America, but, you know, it's everywhere. It's everywhere, as Chicken Man once said. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. All right. Well, good evening to all of you. As always, we have a fabulous show for you tonight. The only live webcast on voiceover in the entire universe. That covers a lot of ground. And yeah. a lot of space, actually. We, we Googled it, so we know that that's true. Absolutely true. We are the only ones doing it live. And because we're live, we get to bring in some really great live people. We have a great guest for you tonight. Lovely lady, classy lady, does some really high-end stuff in the voiceover business. And she's going to join us and talk to us about that and some other cool stuff that she's doing. Randy Thomas will be with us at the bottom of the hour. So make sure you're here for that. I mean, mm -hmm. we're important to listen to, but. You know, you really want to hear what she has to say and see and see what she has to say. Anyway, uh, we also have uh, we've got the news. We've got uh, stuff on some tech. Uh, you're going to you you were at AES this week. So we got some vid from that. And uh, I've got a tip of the week on normalization because everybody asks about that at least 10 to 15 times a day. So I have the final word. On we that. have a ton of stuff in this show. This is kind of, of stuff of tonight. Jam packed so shows we've ever done. Shove it in there and try and compress it down and make it happen. And so our, why and don't our, we start off with the news? Here. Yes, sir. Before we start the news, thanks to Harlan uh, Hogan at voiceover oh. essentials. Thanks to voiceover extra. And of course, edge studio for sponsoring the show. Absolutely. Thanks guys. All righty. And now it's time for eWebs to look at the news. Another news. Okay. Uh, first off, uh, somehow we got nominated for a Voice Arts Awards for, uh, we're on the list for Outstanding Voiceover Podcast. Uh, now, this is going to be great. Now, I don't know if, if we win or if we actually go, I can't go because I'm actually in, a, in a, a, a production of Music Man that same night. So I don't get to meet James Earl Jones, who's hosting it and who's also being honored. But uh, So that means we, are, we, we need to pick somebody from the audience to accept this award on our behalf. I hadn't thought about that. Who could we get? Because uh, we'll, I we'll know I, I can't there. be there either. So we got to pick a New York fan. Steve Tardio? Uh, yeah. We need somebody to accept if we can win. <laughs> if, if, if we, we win. win. If, if we, we win. win. Yeah. You know, I looked at some of the judges and, you know, they're like, you know, these guys, well, we'll see what happens anyway. But, uh, thank you. We were honored that, uh, that we were nominated for that and, uh, looking forward to the end result of that win, lose, draw, or whatever. We all win. Um, sure. Acon digital is a company that just came up out of the woodwork. They make an amazing, 
uh, alternative to Isotope RX for people that find that software a little bit too expensive out of their price range. They have this stuff called their restoration suite. It's a, they have a declicking function, which is really, really pretty good. And uh, it's like 99 bucks. It's really pretty affordable. There is also the dehumming function, which most of you should never need. Um, a declipping tool, which could be helpful if you just store it on a, on a, on a line in a, an audiobook. And a denoise tool if you've got a little bit too high noise floor. So it's available for AAX, VST, and Apple Audio Units plugins for Mac and for Windows. And, and we all know what I think about mixers uh, in doing voiceover. That's why I gave this one to you. Why, thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, our, our good friends at Mackie are announcing a, a, a new budget line of mixers. Uh, now, Mackie's launched a new range of 5 to 12 channel mixers for smaller applications. And they're reasonably priced. Of course, I've never seen an unreasonably pl- priced uh uh, mixer board. I mean, you can get these little tiny things, but the mix series have US MSRPs of that's manufactured suggested retail price for those of you in um, the Canary Islands uh, of sixty nine ninety nine for a five channel mix five. That's a great price for something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, one hundred nine ninety nine for the mix eight and one fifty nine for the mix twelve FX, which has twelve integrated effects. Now those are great if you're doing lots of live stuff. Yeah, uh, certainly if you're doing a live show and having those effects and stuff like that, because you can really have fun with those for voiceover. Yeah. You know, if you need a mixer, you need you need two or three channels for voiceover, but five will probably get you by just fine. And for that price, that sounds like a good deal. Absolutely. Uh, Source Elements is launching their Source Net, among a lot of other things. And Source Net is uh, in the middle of an emergency here because there's an ambulance going by. Uh, yes, living in the city. You're good. You're good. Anyway, provides guaranteed real-time performance powered by our negotiated relationships with the best ISPs in the world. In the world, uh, the closest yet to a true ISDN replacement. Basically, um, they're basically what to, to boil this down. They are going to create their own managed internet connection that they control. That lets them, uh, you know, choose how the network is routed. And who is on it? So it's kind of like having a private network for Source Connect users. So it's going to provide much more stable connections, and really, it's going to be the, one of the only actual true replacements for ISDN that I've seen. So uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty amazing technology, I think. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. I actually got to do a national flight uh, spot this week, a trailer for a book, and we used Source Connect. No kidding. I, you know, they were in New York and they're like, what time can you be our studio in Midtown Manhattan? I'm like, uh, if I start running now, I should get there probably sometime next week. Did you source uh, connect, uh, the regular source connect? Or no, the we source use source connect? connect now. Oh, no kidding. Okay. And we were able to route it through and they recorded it. I recorded it on my end. So that's the thing people forget about is you, remember you can also on source connect. Now you can record on your end in high, you know, in high res and they can record on their end in high res. But if something goes wrong with the connection, you still have all those files and you just shove them down the pipe, you know, into a Dropbox for them, which I did. And That's so right. there was massive backup for that. Yeah. And it worked great. And they were thrilled. And, you know, imagine the savings because they don't have a big, big ISD. Oh, yeah. Especially when it goes, when somebody pulls it out of their wall. Well, See I've got that? a lot. I got a bit more from the AES show here. I've Excellent. just slapped together some highlights from the show. If you like microphones, watch this video. Hey, this is George Woodham reporting for Woodham's World. Well, I'm at the geekiest trade show on earth when it comes to audio, and that's the AES, Audio Engineering Society show here in Los Angeles, California. This should be interesting, hopefully for you. I'll cut together some of the best I've seen in the show, and uh, stay tuned for Woodham's World throughout the coming weeks as I produce more and more content right here from the Los Angeles AES show 2014. Looking at actually taking out some mouth clicks from a recording. Now this is a recording of an interview, so it's dialogue close mic'd, and you're gonna hear a lot of kind of sounds. Born and raised there, moved out in 84, moved to Los Angeles. Born and raised there, moved out in 84. 
Now you can actually see those those click sounds are corresponding with these kind of vertical lines because those are just bursts of noise. That's what a click really is. Um, all we need to do is open up the de-click module. It's going to reset it back to its default. Um, I'm going to set it to multiband because why not? Now first of all, we can hit clicks only. Now this is actually what it's going to be taking out. This is the sound of the click. <laughs> kind of gross, right? Um, and this is actually, if you were to process it out with just those, that's what those clicks actually look like. Those are the mouth noises. Uh, but I don't want to do that, I want to get rid of them. So, we're going to process. Born and raised there, moved out in 84, moved to Los Angeles. And you can see as well, these vertical lines are all those clicks beforehand, and then, that's what we're actually removing. And that is uh, dealing with mouse clicks. <laughs> well, is that D-click also in the standard? Or no? Yes, absolutely. Uh, D-click is both in standard and advanced. Um, there's been some new DSP in RX4 to specifically target mouth noises. Um, it's always been a function, but there's new DSP in it specifically targeting that as an issue. I'm Robert, I'm with Source Elements, and we're over here at the AES show for 2014 in Los Angeles. And just kind of showing a lot of, um, well, some, some new stuff and, and the usual stuff that Source Elements always does to provide real-time, high-quality audio collaboration for professionals that work with audio. Um, so some of the fun stuff that we have here, we're uh, doing an overdub with, uh, with John, who's uh, an excellent singer and friend of mine. John, where are you? standing in the live room at Cave Recording, which is in Evanston, Illinois, just slightly north of Chicago. Very cool. And I, I think specifically for, uh, for George's audience here, who, who's very much in the uh, voiceover industry, I think one of the first things that might be really fun for them to see is exactly how we are getting our internet connection here. And this is pretty exciting. Um, so what we're doing here is we are uh, overdubbing the vocals on a song that John wrote. I'm going to drop them in. A little bit of just right into it. Are my track to record, and I'm going to throw John. Here we go, and I'm going to throw him into record, and you're going to see Source Connect lock up. Woke up late, no one's home. That's live from Chicago. This really is a very powerful thing that uh, voiceover talent can use when they're on the road. Um, we, it's, a, it's kind of an ace in the hole. We have here a Pro Tools session, mixing a spot. This is a screen share of a distant computer. Here's the video within Pro Tools, and here's all the tracks that contribute to that, um, that mix. And we're running Source Live with video. It is capturing that video and capturing the audio from Pro Tools. And then clients can log in to the gateway, or, or in other words, what I kind of call the virtual control room. And we could log in another client here, and each client can have voice and video chat with talkback switches. If I engage this guy. So each one would have a talkback switch, voice and video chat, and they would see and hear that video or that project that's being worked on in, in real time. High quality video and audio streaming. Uh, anywhere in the world, multiple clients at the same time. And I know that's not quite in the voiceover world, but it's kind of after you guys have voiced everything, but this is what some of the post engineers can do to work with their clients remotely to bring them in on the product. This is Christopher Currier, and we are here at the AES show in Los Angeles, and we are so excited to be relaunching a classic Neumann microphone, the U47 FET. The U47 FET is now back as a collector's edition, this mic was originally around from 1972 to 1986 and had a very distinct sound on recordings that you probably don't even know that it's been used on, but it was so wildly popular. And then that sound kind of went out of favor. You know, people were looking for things that were more clean. They wanted more transparency. And now with the resurgence of vinyl and the desire to have uh, albums that have a little bit more soul, it's a perfect time for us to bring the U47 FET back. It's an amazing kick drum mic, fantastic for a uh, guitar cabinet, but also incredible on vocals, voiceover, giving a totally different tonality and character to the voice. So this microphone is back as a collector's edition, 
and retails for $4,000. So this is the latest edition, the U47 FET. And welcome to the SPL booth here, where we're talking about the new Crimson. The Crimson is an interface, a USB interface for recording, and what it does is have so many features, including the ability to use as a standalone object. So first of all, if you're going to have a, a, a piece like this, you're going to have to get some good mic pre's. Well, in this thing, we have built everything we know about mic pre's from SPL. So we have the best mic pre's that we have from SPL and all the technology we have to offer. So that saves you a ton of money right out of the chute. So you've got two great mic pre's, then you have two independent headphone amplifiers as well. Then you can hang two sets of speakers off of this as well. It overall, there's a lot of bang for the buck. If you just bought two mic pre's, good mic pre's, you know, you're, you're probably past the cost of what this unit is. This is $799 retail. As a matter of fact, the gentleman who, who uh, designed it uh, had to have one for himself. <laughs> I think that's a great testament, you know. Dave Thomas here from Advanced Audio Microphones and talking with George Whitten today about microphones for voice actors. One of the things I went after when I got into, got pulled back into building microphones um, was that I went after a, an 87 version that was affordable. And so I came up with my CM87 microphone, which has the same response as the U87. But one of the things I learned back in the 80s was that my, the AKG414 mic would take way more level than an 87. Uh, you can put it on percussion and drums. And, and the 87 wasn't as good as, as handling those big transients. So we use it, what we did is we built a mic that has the 414 circuit, but the 87 response, which really works well on voices. Now, when you're working with um, voice actors, they're not always speaking in this kind of level. Of, often you get them just going, what's that? Or the next minute, the uh, they're going, ah, screaming as loud as they can, because that's in the script. So you need a microphone that has a huge dynamic range. And so our 87 will actually has more dynamic range than the original 87s, which were basically designed for spot miking small orchestras. Uh, so, so that's the, and we, we go after, it's the same, exactly the same, it has a cardioid pattern, figure eight, and omni, and, and there's a pad on it, which you don't you really need for voice uh, recording, but, but it will, it will handle that guy that's, that's got that, you know, he's, he's doing that affected, um, mid-rangey, alien kind of voice for some cartoon, and, and without getting nasty, but it'll still allow it to cut through through your mix where you've got you know all those sound effects behind there and the music so so that so that's uh, you know, how I went about uh, you know working the 87 it really was my f I went after it for for voiceover actors. This is Dusty Wakeman from Mojave Audio we're here at AES 2014 in Los Angeles happy to be in our hometown um, these are the Mojave microphones this is our MA300 it's our large diaphragm tube condenser uh, multi-pattern with a uh, Here's the continuously variable pattern selector, so you can dial in those sweet spots. And this one comes with a pad and a high pass filter. This is the solid state large diaphragm, it's the 301 FET, and it comes with a multi three patterns, a high pass filter, and a pad. This is our voiceover favorite. Out of all of them, this seems to be the one the voiceover guys like the most because they love those fets. They have a little extra presence and reach to them. And this is David Royer. He's the guy that designs all these things. How do you do? So that's the, the line as it stands right now. we got a couple more fun things on the drawing board that we hope to get out very soon. I just want to add that we have an extensive audio video library on our website, mojaveaudio.com. So there's samples of all sorts of instruments. You can search by instrument or by microphone, or by genre, or by en engineer. So check it out, mojaveaudio.com. Hi, I'm Terry Winston. I'm the executive director of Women's Audio Mission. We're here at the Audio Engineering Society convention, and we're having a great time at our booth. Um, we train women and girls in the recording arts. We also run a professional recording studio in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's the only re uh, professional recording studio run entirely by women. We train um, 900 women and girls every year in the recording arts in the Bay Area. We also have um, online textbooks that uh, we reach about 6,700 students in 129 countries. And um, we'd love to have you come join us. Visit us in San Francisco.
So we're at um, www.womensaudiomission.org. Well, it's just about the end of the AES 137 show here in LA, but it wouldn't be complete without running into a friend from the voiceover world. And guess who flew out just for this show? Well, maybe not, but actually, I got right here with me Anthony Mendez. What's up, everybody? <laughs> George is trying to make me spend money over here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But we had a great time. There was a lot of amazing stuff. I hope you enjoyed the coverage. This is George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the East West Audio Body Shop. Ah! Meow. Snails like it too. Yeah, boy, lots of. But if you've got gear acquisition syndrome, gas, <laughs> AES is the place to be. Well, oh, that's a lot of great stuff. <laughs> anyway, speaking of some other great stuff, uh, I've got a big webinar coming up on Wednesday night with VoiceOver Extra. If you're if you're really wondering how your audition audio should be, like when you're sending out auditions, what should your audio sound like? Well, we're going to do a whole webinar about that. I'll answer your questions. I've got a whole presentation about how that all works. And it's not always the same for everything. So if you want to attend, it's only 39 bucks and you'll get, you'll get a video of it and everything. So you can like, gee, what did Dan say about that? I'll go look at the video again and you can just rewind it and look at it again. Uh, but if you want to do that, um, all you have to do is go to this link right here. Hopefully George is putting it right beneath me here. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> okay, get it in there somehow. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yes. Bit.ly forward slash audition audio webinar. And uh, we're going to have a great time. Those are always a lot of fun. We're going to do this one on Zoom this time. And the audio will be spectacular. The picture will be fabulous. And you'll just have a great time because we always have a great time. Speaking of a great time, we always talk about normalizing on here. Well, we don't mention it much because we're like, you don't have to do this a lot, uh, but here's a, a tip of the week where we talk about normalization and some of the stuff around there that everybody doesn't understand. So roll it. Oops. Here we go. <laughs> After all this time, there's still confusion about normalization. You know, I still hear from people saying that they heard they had to normalize their audio. Well, do you? Like everything else, I guess it sort of depends. First, let's define normalization. Audio normalization is the application of a constant amount of gain to an audio recording to bring the average or peak amplitude to a target level. The norm. norm. The norm? Yes. What you want to be your highest average level. It's important to have your audio loud enough to 1. Be heard 
and two, to give the end user enough volume to manipulate it without making everything else in your audio louder. We've talked about setting levels. It's important that your audio signal, your voice, is consistently peaking between minus 6 and minus 4 dB, not down here. Unfortunately, some people are still under the impression that you use normalization to bring your low input audio up to a constant level. Not so. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to read some copy and then change the levels. Reinforcing steel bar, or rebar, is used to strengthen concrete in virtually every construction project around the world. For every one ton of concrete poured, approximately three quarters of a ton of rebar are required. Okay, first off, I want to show you exactly what happens when you normalize an uneven file. It doesn't even everything out. We'll normalize to minus three. You'll see it makes only the loudest part louder to minus three here, but it doesn't really make this any louder. Reinforcing steel bar, or rebar, is used to strengthen concrete in virtually every construction project around the world. For every one ton of concrete poured, approximately three quarters of a ton of rebar are required. Now, what happens when I normalize each individual section here individually? As you can see, it's, is it everything even now? Listen. Reinforcing steel bar, or rebar, is used to strengthen concrete in virtually every construction project around the world. For every one ton of concrete poured, approximately three quarters of a ton of rebar are required. As you can hear, it sounds similar, but if you really examine it and listen carefully, it's not quite the same. The file that was the quietest now it tends to be a little bit deeper because it was given a lot of extra gain. But here's the worst problem about normalizing a file that is too low in volume. Let's just work with the part of the file that is recorded the lowest here. Let's normalize this and realize that there's silence on each end of this, but there's also noise floor. Not only does normalizing increase the gain of the actual sound file, of the actual signal of your voice, but it makes everything else louder as well. Watch. To minus three. As you can see, these lines here get a little bit more intense. Listening to it, for every one ton of concrete poured, approximately three quarters of a ton of rebar are required. It also might also intensify any minor plosives into more major plosives. But let's look at this on another program that will show you exactly what I mean. In Adobe Audition, it becomes real obvious what happens when you normalize a file that is recorded too low. It increases the noise floor, which you can hardly see in the spectrogram here. But look what happens when we normalize just this low part of the file. Let's normalize this to minus 3. You'll see here that there were things that weren't there before, like this noise here, which is well above minus 50, that weren't there before. So when you normalize something, you're not only making your voice signal louder, as I said, but you're also making any noise floor louder. So you've got to make sure that's clean in the first place. Still, the best thing is to record it loud enough in the first place so it's not a problem. So, now, when do you normalize? Some experts say right after you record, which makes sense. You want the audio you edit with at the right level. Some say as the last step before you send anything. Look, if you set your levels right in the first place, that strategy makes sense. So, like all other processing, if your initial levels are right, it should be a subtle adjustment, just a little bit, not a nuclear weapon to raise a low signal. And that's my tip of the week. And we're back. Yeah, you know, normalization, big confusion point with a lot of people. Uh, they hear you have to normalize your stuff. 
it's a subtle, tiny little adjustment to make sure that your audio is loud enough. So record it loud enough in the first place. And that's the only way I can, I can describe that. Uh, and if you have any questions, of course, we'll be happy to elaborate. You can write to us here at uh, ewebshop at gmail.com. I'm sorry, ewebshop at gmail.com. <laughs> so make sure it goes to the right place. Uh, and uh, we'll answer your question on the air here. And uh, I'm still looking for more topics, you know, although everyone keeps asking about normalization. So I thought we'd, we'd take a stab at that one. Okay, enough video from our end. Uh, I think it's time that we, we, we move on to another subject, and we will in just a minute. We've got Randy Thomas to grace our fine screen here on East West Audio Body Shop in just a minute. So don't go anywhere. VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, Georgia set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. Hey, honey. I bought you a new suit. Oh, no. What fancy function is it now with all those hoity-toity people? What are they? My dear, it's... Is this for your work? Please don't tell me I have to sit with your BB again, boring boss. If I have to, I... No, it's not that... Wait, is your sister getting married again? This is like her fourth or fifth time, poor guy. Somebody should warn him about... Would you just listen? I'd take any of these over the theater. Please don't make me go to another one of those over-the-top musicals you love so much. They just... Okay, fine. I'll send it back. I think Dan has a return policy for his studio suits. I'm sure the UPS guy is still outside and what? he'll take it Dan? Back. Studio suit? Wait, honey. I didn't mean any of it. I love getting dressed up with you. Your, your boss is fascinating. Mm, uh, your sister is a catch. Honey, baby. Cats. That's it. Let's go see cats again. That was my favorite one. I hate cats. I <laughs> <laughs> love that spot. Midnight. And okay. Anyway, welcome back to East West Audio Body Shop. And let's welcome our fabulous guest who we've been waiting all week to get here on our show. Let's say a big hello to Randy Thomas. Good evening, Randy. Hi. How are you? We're fabulous. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, you are a very accomplished lady in the voice business. And that's, and that's, there's a lot of great women in the business, a lot of great men, a lot of great people, but you've really reached the pinnacle of the business here. And uh, we don't know perhaps a whole lot about you. We, you're, you're well known amongst the people in voiceover and you're certainly known by billions and billions and billions of people. When you're when you're doing the Oscars and, and the Emmy Awards and stuff like that, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where you're from and, and how you got uh, into voiceover. Well, uh, boy, that's a, that's a long sob story. You don't want to hear my whole oh, we life. Got, we got plenty just of time. the Reader's Digest version. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll condense it. Um, you know, I was a 20 year radio broadcaster. I was a kid that was a total radio geek. Used to go to bed with. Uh, my transistor under my cover yeah, yeah. night. Uh, at the time, I was living on Miami Beach, Florida. And at night, when all the, the radio stations would lower their power, I could get WABC in Miami. And to me, that was the beginning because I was a, a true radio geek. Like, I was the kid in seventh grade on the bus to school with a top 40 survey. And I would just hand it off to a friend and say, all right, just say any record. I'll tell you, you know, what number it is. And I'll tell you who the, who the artist is, or, you know, tell me the number and I'll tell you what artist has that, that charted song. 
So I was a, a kid that loved music, loved radio, figured out that that was probably the best place for me. I wanted to be an actor, but uh, I went to New York and in trying to find my way in New York, Broadway, all of that, I realized I wasn't so much a triple threat. You know, I could talk, I couldn't sing, and I wasn't really a great dancer. So I thought, okay, so there's like all these people on Broadway, they're going to get ahead of me in line. So I should go home to Detroit, Michigan, where I'm from. And uh, after Miami, I lived in Miami as a kid broken family. My mom married a bunch of times. So I bounced around a lot of different states. But in Detroit, I went back home and I got on the radio and I started a 20-year broadcasting career that took me from uh, Detroit to New York, to LA, to Florida, and then back to LA where I while I was on the wave in Los Angeles, I was doing mornings for the uh, three years on KTWV, the wave. I was asked to audition to be the first woman in history in 1993 to do the Oscars, and I booked it, and it changed my life. I was fired a few months later from radio, and after getting fired from radio, I thought, okay, so... I have this new skill. It's called voiceover. I didn't realize that that's what it was. And my husband was in the record business dealing with record and radio. And he started going to radio stations saying, you know, you use a guy to do branding and imaging for your radio station. Maybe you'll use Randy. And this is in 1993. So uh, they started using me and I became a branding imaging person, uh, the first woman to do that. And uh, I've gone off into all different kinds of areas of voiceover, from live to radio imaging to television promo and, you know, commercials here and there. But that's kind of what got me to where we are now, Dan. It keep, keeps you busy, though, <laughs> I'm sure, because you got your own studio there. And that's that's what we all like to see. Yeah, now, the booth that I get to sit in every day, you know, it's a, a nice uh digital space to be in. Uh, I made it small enough. I don't have a monitor in here. I bring my laptop, which is currently providing my connection to you, but my laptop is usually in front of me and I read copy off the laptop. I try to do it as ecologically conscious as possible. Occasionally I do print copy out. I have a whole garbage can full of copy because sometimes for me I'm better off reading from the printed page than I am off of a computer and and mm-hmm. really in order to get your best performance whatever medium is best for you if it's you know destroying a few trees to read paper go for it because uh you really have to be at your best in this business at all times yeah. And it's important, you know, with a lot of people, you know, they, they'll take a pencil or a pen and got to mark your copy and stuff. And there's, but there's ways to do that digitally as well, but we do want to save as many trees as possible. After a while, those things get, you know, it's like the tower of Babel. If you don't throw them out after a while. It's uh, true. You know, when I worked for entertainment tonight, which I'm still their voice, but uh, they're in a phase right now where they're using all of their hosts to be their signature voices. Um, But I am the voice when they want one. But right now they're working with their host. But um, Mm -hmm. there was a time where my Entertainment Tonight copy was taller than I was. And I only wanted to keep it for that long. And then I felt really guilty, Dan and George, about like, oh, my God, I've got I'm only five, five. So I had like six feet worth of copy. I'm like, what do I do with this? This seems so irresponsible of me. And then I, I donated a bunch of it. I shredded it and donated it to a local pet store because that's what they put in all their cages. And I'm like, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> good, good, good extra use of that. That's right. Yeah. Now, now you, you made the transition from broadcasting into, into voiceover, which is not easy for a lot of people, especially today who are coming out of broadcasting. Uh, they've got to learn. It's not the same thing, is it? No. In fact, uh, I remember when I was trying to make the transition, I'm sure there's a lot of DJs today. No, not here. Make the transition <laughs> from uh, 
broadcast into voiceover and they're told there's no way you're going to make it. But in 1993, that's what they told me. You're a DJ. You're not really a voiceover artist. You're not a, a, a true actor. You're more of a broadcaster. You'll never succeed. So for me, those kind of words are the best motivation I could ever ask for. Like, you can't do this is like inviting me to just commit my life to it. <laughs> that's, that's always good motivation. Now, now you, as you were saying, you started doing you know, the Emmys and the Oscars in, in 1992. Of course, yeah, 1993, and I was 93, the first yeah. woman in history to do the Academy Awards. Academy Awards. Now, and once, of course, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Well, I just want to say that once I, I kicked the door open for women in 1993, then, because there were only like nine guys doing live award shows. So there were nine guys and then there was me. So from the Oscars in 1993, I've done the Emmys, uh, um, the Tonys, which I've just finished my 16th consecutive year. So that's been my steady gig of all the award shows. But I did the Emmys. I did AFI awards. I've done Oscars. I've done uh, uh, SAG awards. I've done a lot of the major award shows. And uh, Tony's has stuck with me. I've gone back to the Oscars. I've done it more than any woman in history, seven times. Wow. And um, there have definitely been a few women that have uh, women that have come through the door. I kicked it open, and now it's challenging. Bring Even on the women! Yeah, yeah. But but the thing is, they're they're doing the shows now. And I audition, but I don't always book them. There are mm -hmm. other women that are doing these shows. The Melissa Disney's of the world, um, you know, they're they're doing the work. So, but what's the process for for doing that sort of thing? Because this is this is doing it live. It's a it's right. a probably a slightly different skill. What are they looking for when when you're auditioning for that type of stuff? Well, I don't know other than my first audition, and I remember Gil Cates and Jeff Margolis asking me. When we go live to a billion people, what's going to happen? Are you going to be able to handle the pressure of live? And I told them, you know, uh, I've spent 20 years on the radio. So when we're live, I'm at the top of my game. And I didn't realize it at the time. But what I told them uh, totally, you know, assuaged any doubt they might have had that I could do the job. And I did it. And there are women that are not broadcasters that have actually gone on to do uh, the Oscars, the Emmys, uh, AFI, SAG Awards, Grammys. Um, you know, a lot of people get to do them and you don't have to be a DJ type anymore to do it. But right. yeah, it's a whole different skill set. Yeah. It, and it's, it's a totally subtle. It's a very subtle type of read, too. It's, I mean, it, the intro is, can be very grand, but everything else is a little bit more subtle, isn't it? Well, it's interesting because you've got that big live open, which really isn't live so much anymore, but it is the open. So I have a problem when I hear an announcer do the open for the Oscars in a recording studio, but they don't anticipate in a recording studio what it should really sound like when you are going live to the world. So on one hand, as the announcer, you're like, phew, I did it. I did it in pre-record. They're going to play it. It'll be perfect. Versus when the timpani happens and the live orchestra and the director is, you know, cue announce, cue orchestra, and you get to go live, um, your energy will match it. Unfortunately, for a lot of the people that I have heard do live shows, they don't realize that when they're live, they're going to have this anxious, excited, you know, energy that will not match all of the pre-records. Unless when you were doing your pre-record, you sort of imagined how you're going to feel when you're live. And if you do your pre-records like you're live, then the whole show will sound in context and real. Yeah, if wow. you do your pre-records, the Academy Awards are brought to you, but doesn't match. Not going to sound good. It's not going to sound. It's not going to match your audio when you're live on the air. 
Right? Yeah. No, I, I, there's an the amazing woman in history. I, I learned all these things. So. There's, there's an amazing clip on the net. I, I don't know where to find it right now. It's, just, it's, it's on YouTube and it's an award show and it's a shot from the control room. Mm -hmm. And they're showing you the, you get the audio from the director. And so you get to the feel of the energy and it is unbelievable. The guy's calling cameras like three, one, two, five. Yeah, and it's right. just like things go, and it's just the intensity. Yeah, the, the intensity is unbelievable. That was me. That was one of my live years. The director was Louis J. Horvitz. And he's going crazy because I believe it was the year where Cuba Gooding Jr. maybe one of those incredible Oscar acceptance speeches. Yeah. And he's like, that's how you do a first act, you know, because uh, usually um, best supporting actor after you've got your open, the monologue and then establishing your first uh, award and out of the first award winner, which is uh, best supporting actor, they go to break. So I could hear his excitement. I'm just listening for my cue. But when you are part of a live global award show, you are one tiny little cog in a giant wheel yeah. that has to perform on time perfectly for the show to work. You know, that's why when I do the Tonys, I mean, the Tonys seem to win the Oscar, uh, the Oscar, pardon me. They win the Emmy every year because Glenn Weiss is such an incredible director. Glenn and Ricky Kirshner produce the most amazing live show with all the talent it takes to do the Tonys. It is the um, most fun to watch. I've been there for the last 16 years and uh, it's, we've won an awful lot of Emmys because it is this incredible wheel and every one of us that it's a, is a cog in it. Huh. We know what our job is mm -hmm. and if we're doing our job. You know, you don't think about an Emmy when you're doing your job. You're just thinking about doing your job to get off the air, maybe doing it perfectly or hopefully close to perfect. And that's what you're going for. You're going for in the moment. And then if you get an Emmy a year later or six months later, isn't that awesome? I, I, I have to know from just from the geeky side of me, what are you hearing in your head, in your cans during the show? Are you hearing the, the director? The whole time yeah. shouting away into the. Yeah. I, from wow. what I've heard, there are many announcers that can't handle hearing the director calling all the other calls that need to be made during the course of a live broadcast. And so they ask to have their headset. So they only hear the director when they call them. Wow. Me, you're missing out on all the fun because really? the best part of being on headset is listening to all the comments between the director, the AD, the cameraman, the stage hands talking about what's actually happening in that moment. And I love it. I, as a, a former DJ that lived being live on the radio, when I'm hearing all this stuff, I know how to separate it when, yeah. and you know what, do you want me to tell you a secret? Yeah, please. So, <laughs> So a lot of the women that have done live don't call me and ask me, what should I do, Randy, when I go live? And if they don't ask, how can I tell them, right? Right. There is a secret. There is a secret to doing a live show. And that is usually they don't split the headset. Right. In other words, you will hear live and uh, director in both ears. I ask them, can we split it? So here's the live show. Here's the director. When I'm speaking, I don't have the live on my side. I'll just be listening. And cue announce. This ear, let me grab a set of headphones. So like <laughs> what a so, move. So all right, so we'll do it in time. So <laughs> say I'm wearing my headphones like this, but when I'm waiting to hear my cue, I don't want to hear the show. That's distracting. I want to hear for and cue announce. As soon as I hear that, this right ear goes off. And I put it behind and I'm only listening to live show because in the live show, if you can't hear yourself speaking and you can't hear yourself enunciate, you will screw up. So I like uh. to hear myself. I hear what I need to do. I hear the actors. I hear everything they're saying. And uh, once I've been cued from this headset, 
then, you know, it's off and I'm back here. It's kind of a crazy dance. That's you amazing. That. That but really, uh, if you don't separate your headphones. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it reminds me, I, I did some engineering for radio, uh, doing remotes for football, Eagles football right. games. And it was so intense that the, I think the first year that I did it, I didn't even know what was going on in the game. I had no clue what of was course. going on. It took so like, focused. yeah, it took a full season to the, get to the point where right. I could actually enjoy the game. So mm-hmm. like, I, I totally get the, once You're you not get there comfort- to enjoy the game, you're there to present the game. Yeah, I know. But I mean, eventually you can relax enough and, and be able to multitask and be able to enjoy the game. But it, yeah, it takes, pra- it takes quite a bit of practice to get to that yeah. point. And for someone like me, that's kind of a little bit ADD, I, I, I have, I, you know, it's easy for me to get off track. It's a job staying focused for three or four hours and like yeah. re- staying on page. But <clears throat> you know what? I have done, <clears throat> pardon me, more live shows than probably anyone in the last 20 years. And um, I love it. It's an element where I am so in my space. I, mm. I, I'm in my zone. I, I don't know how to explain it other than I live for a live broadcast. Yeah. If you come out of broadcasting, that's usually the uh, everybody's you know loves doing it live. Like we do this show live. We never know what's going to happen here. And usually, yeah, when you ask me, you guys ask me, you're like, "Are you nervous, Randy?" And I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you guys nervous talking to me? <laughs> Not anymore. Well, hardly. But you know, we're Not we. Enough. Yeah. Uh, now, do you get to be on camera at all for those? No, no one's ever asked me to be on camera. I'm a little, you know, hurt. <laughs> But no, lots of the women that have done Oscars and Emmys have gotten to be on camera. No one has ever asked me to do that. And and I'm okay with it because to tell you the truth, it's so intense doing that job, going live to the world and getting it right from page to mouth and out to the world. If I don't know that there's a camera pointing at me, I'm, I'm, I'm better. I'm, I'm really better off that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're lost because you would still look great on there. Oh, thank you. Well, what other type of work are you doing besides, uh, you know, uh, from the live shows? You said you're doing some uh, some promo work and things like that. What what sort of things will we hear you on? Well, you know, I'm a imaging voice, so I do radio imaging for various stations around the country, and I do um, affiliate work for uh, <clears throat> affiliates that are located in cities across America. Um, that's pretty much my daily work. Mm-hmm. I have been, um, can you, can you explain real quick uh, what affiliate I mean, like any voiceover artist I audition for a living? That's pretty much it. Sure. Can, can you explain real quick what affiliate is? Just, I know what the term okay. is, but let me be moment on. Well, in every town where you live, you have a television station that is the ABC affiliate or NBC in your hometown or CBS. Um, So I work for radio uh, for television stations that are the affiliate station for those different markets. And um, I generally do news promos, you know, tonight at 10, it's an all new, you know, or, um, you know, should you be worried about unemployment? That sort of thing. Right, right. That's very yeah. high. I mean, I've watched uh, Bill, Bill Ratner does this stuff, right? And I've been in the booth with Bill many times because he, I do his studio stuff. And wow, that's intense stuff. It's not live, but it's darn close because they need that stuff in a really narrow time window, right? Yeah. When you do promo or affiliate work, which essentially is promo, um, everyone is on a deadline. And when they send you audio, they would really like it back within the next 10 minutes. So you're, <laughs> you can't do this work without constantly looking at your email, who just emailed me, you know, and what station is it? When are they going live? Are they going live at four? Are they going live at five? And, and how soon, who do you have to get their audio back for uh, first? Um, but I love it. You know, there are a lot of people in our industry that do long form narration. And I was just recently approached to do a um an emergency preparation online project Mm. for someone uh for one of the states in our beautiful country and i am working on that that's like 
a lot of work. I mean, <laughs> I just did, I just did eighteen thousand words. That takes a lot of time to record and to do it right. Thank mm-hmm. goodness I have an editor that edits uh, all my screw ups. But um, that that's a different kind of work. I like working in a thirty second format or a fifteen second format where give me the promo and do it quickly and let's get it, you know, get it right back to me well, versus yeah. long form that takes hours to narrate. Then someone's got to edit it for three times that length. It's different, but you know what? I, I like exploring all the different avenues of voiceover that are available. And uh, I just stepped into some of this long form narration and I have a lot of respect for people that can do audio books and long form. It, it's very, um, very trying. Yep. Now you're also teaching and you've got a big event coming up in the, in the wonderful sunshine state. Yes. So plug away. Well, thank you so much. Uh, yes, I live here in Fort Myers, Florida. I left Los Angeles in 2003 when my daughter just finished kindergarten and here's a scary thought. She is now a senior in high school and she will be graduating in June. And we're all about college apps right now. So it's hard mm-hmm. to believe I moved here when she was just finishing kindergarten. And now she's getting ready to go off to college next year. And, and you know, it was knowing that um, I only have one child. I waited a long time to do it. I'm one of those older moms. But uh, in in having a child later in life or at being blessed to have one at all, I realized that um, when my daughter leaves home next year, what the hell am I going to do? So (laughs) I've started working on what's next. And, And to tell you the truth, George, and don't you think we're all in transition in some way? We're all looking for what's next for me, for the injury, for Um, so on so many levels, we're all in transition. So I've started doing a lot of, uh, public speaking. I'll be going to the Midwest voice conference in Columbus, Ohio this week, and I'll speak there. And then when I get home, I'm continuing to work on my first big conference that I'm putting on right here in Fort Myers, Florida. And it's called the VO mastery event. And it's November 14th, 15th, and 16th. I, you know, like I said, for all of us that are in transition, you can only hope that you are truly following your call, like what the universe has set up for you, that you're hearing it and that you're following what your passion and what your next step in life is. So I decided I'm going to hold an event here in Fort Myers, Florida about voiceover. I called my buddy, Joe Cipriano. He was the first guy to say, Randy, you're doing an event in Fort Myers, Florida. Ann and I would love to be there to support you. So Joe Cipriano and Ann Cipriano came on board first. They're going to come and he's going to read from his book, Living on Air. But Joe is so much more than just a writer and a voiceover guy. He has so much to offer. He is the quintessential pro. He is a funny, funny man and um, not a bad tennis player. He's definitely given me some hard days on the tennis court. So, guys in good shape. Uh, Joe is the first one to say yes, Melissa Disney. You know, Melissa and I have both done the Academy Awards. We've both done the Emmy Awards. She's done the Grammy Awards like Joe. I've never done the Grammys. but And everyone always wants to introduce me as Randy Thomas. You know, she's done the Grammys. I'm like, it's the one show I've never done. But, <laughs> um, but anyway, so Melissa, Joe, I have uh, then Edge came on board. Your buddies. Graham Spicer, and we have got so many exciting things going on with David and Graham and George. You're coming into Fort Myers, Florida, somewhere you've never been. And then I went to the uh, Sydney and Byrne Davis Arts Center because originally I was planning like 40 people and I could hold it in the hotel. But once I hit over 40, I needed to move it to a bigger venue. I went to the beautiful Sydney and Byrne Davis Art Center in downtown Fort Myers. Their commitment in life is to the continued education for the arts. And I said, you know, I'm bringing in voiceover people from all over the country that want to learn about this uh, field. And I'm bringing them to Fort Myers somewhere 90% of them have never been. 
and they said, we're in, we will give you the venue. We want you to come and have it here. Then I started talking to Full Sail, Full Sail Recording up in Orlando. Not only am I getting a camera crew from Full Sail, I've got students coming down now from Full Sail University. Um, it's crazy, but like it just took on a life of its own and it's almost a month away, right? So I think with 30 days out, we're looking really good. And the, the point is that I've got the Sydney Byrne uh, and Byrne Davis Art Center, which if we get even 100 or 150 people, we can still put them in that venue. And the numbers are climbing, but I, we've still got room for people. And because I had two big sponsors come in, I'm breaking news with you guys. No one has heard this before, okay? Ooh. We're listening. And Go ahead. We the price. So originally, I thought I was going to have a smaller, more um, uh, defined audience. Once I was able to open it up to not only people that are passionate about uh, their voice and passionate about their career, but now we can take uh, various levels of achievement in the world of voiceover and I can, I have space for everyone. And so we've lowered the price and for edge and EWAB's listeners, an extra $50 off. I didn't say did I say that out loud? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, heard you it. You did. You did. Every every last uh, word. All right, hold me to it now. That's all right. All right. <laughs> Thank well, you. That sounds that. like that's going to be. Uh, boy, I, I hope I can get down there for this. <laughs> I, yeah. Just to hang out I with George and you, but uh, I'm down here. I know. Well, I, then I'll have to come visit my mother-in-law. That's uh, right. But other than that, <laughs> where, where's your mother-in-law? Yeah, uh, she's she's in uh, she's in Wellington in uh, West Palm. That's the other side, but. Anyway, right. I'm only, uh, what, two and a half, three hours. From and that's it just, just a hop, skip and a jump. Anyway, well, that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of questions from our audience who are just totally enamored with everything you Love just it. had to say, but they have more questions. Okay. So we'll wow. get to those in just a minute. Uh, but first, we got to talk about one of our sponsors because he's been here since the beginning of time. We don't try to tell him that much, but he has been here <laughs> since at least the beginning of EWABS, and that's. Harlan Hogan and the wonderful stuff he has over at voice over essentials. So go over to voiceoveressentials.com because they got great stuff there. They've got, of course, his signature series stuff like the VO one, a microphone, which is great for men's voices and women's voices. I've heard them on both. They sound great, great price point, great microphone. If you're looking for a new mic, check that one out because it's tuned for voiceover. And we've got uh, all the other stuff that the signature series headphones, which I actually used on my session this week to do uh, to do that national book trailer. So and they were actually fabulous and um, super comfy, super comfortable. They've got memory foam in them. They're made of leather and metal, and they have the legendary Twistaflex headband. It's just a very comfortable pair of headphones. Yeah, they, they they basically take the Sony headphones that everybody has had to wear in the studio and had their ears damaged by over the years, and you get used to these things. They're like an ice pick in the forehead. I swear, the Sonys. I I can't. They're they're a standard in the business, but these things take everything about the Sonys that I don't like, and they fix it all. And they're yep. more comfortable, better quality. They last longer. The cord is even a better design. It really he he really is uh, made voiceover right. headphones. These things are cool. Yeah, and these would be great for you, Randy, because you can flip one up on what very easily, and then flip up the other side. I yeah. like it. I like it. So, um, George, will you bring a pair of those to Florida? I will. I'm going to shove one in my uh, to go to Florida box. Okay, good, good. So, let, if you don't mind, I just wanted to talk about the fact that we have got some incredible sponsors that are supporting this event. Sure, please. We have Wink Television, which is the local CBS affiliate, mm -hmm. and Wink is offering us a promo. They're going to, we're going to audition and someone, oh. a Wink Television CBS TV program. Uh, we've got Duncan's Diamonds out of Ohio and Florida. They're a fine jewelry store. They have copy and we are going to cast three people for that commercial. And uh, then actually the center, the Sydney and Burn Davis Art Center 
need a commercial done. So we're going to cast a voice for that. And I think Full Sail uh, University may be looking for a voice. So we're going to organize all of our commercials. Sennheiser, um, you know, I happen to be a uh, Sennheiser uh, and Neumann endorsed uh, voiceover artist. And so they are very kindly coming in and giving away a Sennheiser uh, uh, mic. I think we have the MK4. And I'm waiting for Chris oh, to tell what Neumann mic we're going to give the away. The MK4 is is fantastic. Really, tell me about it. Oh, it just it just <laughs> is. It's uh, it's very affordable. First of all, so it puts that mic in a realm that's within the realm of affordability for most people that wouldn't normal normally even dream about getting a uh, a Neumann or or a Sennheiser mic. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'd say it's it's a mic that would be a good starter mic for most voice actors who who. Uh, just want that German heritage microphone, you know, the, that, that, that lineage of Sennheiser. It really, it really is the, uh, it's the real deal. And, uh, I put one in the booth for, um, oh boy, I hate it when I say, I'm going to say a name and then I can't remember the name. Who's the British actor, Dan, I've always talked about getting on the show someday. Uh, oh, uh, 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 Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell. I put one oh, in the booth. Oh, I, I, I pulled that one out of Good my job. I put, <laughs> I put one in the, Put one in Malcolm McDowell's booths, and uh, I think he's using it oh, regularly to do uh, to do yeah, commercials there. But it's a it's a really quality mic, and for that, that price range, Malcolm it's Malcolm McDowell from Clockwork Orange. That yes. Malcolm McDowell, yes, my fellow droogies. <laughs> the guy is still working up. A, this guy's still working like crazy. That's crazy. One day I'll show my daughter that movie. Yeah, like, yeah. That, <laughs> that movie tripped me out when I was in high school. I was like. What was that? that? I don't even know what I just saw. That movie's really Stanley uh, Kubrick. He was so crazy. Yeah, that, that was, movie's that was in, intense. Movie. <laughs> it, it was. Yeah, you read the book, that'll really confuse you a whole lot more. <laughs> questions anyway, in the chat room? You got more questions? Oh man, we, we, got, oh, we got questions from the audience here. <laughs> we got a lot. We'll, we'll start off with one of our favorite people, J.S. Gilbert, up there in uh, South San Francisco. He asks, what job has Randy done that she giggles about when she thinks about it? Um, well, I would say Oscars, only because of all of the live award shows, it, it seems to be the biggest. And because it was my first, the good news for me was I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And it, was, it wasn't until my first Oscar awards passed and I had already done it and I only made one little fafum um, that I realized, oh my gosh, what have I done? And it forever tickles me that, you know, that that's a show that I can say, yes, I've been the voice of that program seven times. So I would say Oscars. I mean, 12 years, uh, 10 years with Entertainment Tonight, that's, that's also good. But Oscars, it's, you know, it's ephemeral. Quite a feather in the cap, so to speak. Uh, also, JS asks, did you have trouble getting representation at first? Definitely. When I first started looking for an agent in Los Angeles, I was told um, it's very hard to get an agent and um, no agents really want to represent disc jockeys because that's what I was at the time. And once I booked the Oscars, all of a sudden, a lot of agents were interested in me. Um the difference between today and when I started in 1993 after the Oscars is um, there's a lot of ways to go. Uh, agents are great if you're union. And I started in Los Angeles, so I've always been a union player. But if you are not union, you don't really need an agent. There are enough marketing companies that you can get work from. But we're going to talk at our event here in Fort Myers, Florida, November 14th and 15th and 16th about where the worlds collide between union and non-union and how we're going to work this business out. So that's a big conversation we're going to have. Hope right. I answered the question so far. All right. Laurel Thomas asks, how do they audition for live announced gigs? Are there specific agents that typically handle those? And do you have to be in New York? That sort of thing. Or in Los Angeles? Apparently not. I, I think it happens different ways. Obviously, Oscars is a Los Angeles gig. Any of the show, any show that comes out of any particular city belongs to that city. 
So for example, the, um, uh, what would that be? The um, Kennedy Center Honors. That is specific to Washington. It's a show I've wanted to do for many years, but it's specific to Washington, D.C., and they tend to choose a local announcer. The other shows, Emmys, Oscars, those are all L.A. based, uh, and they tend to want to pick an actor, voice voiceover actor, from that area. I do the Tonys, but when I was first chosen to do the Tonys, I was living in L.A., so they have brought me there 16 years in a row. I'm no longer living in L.A. Now it's just a quick flight from Florida to New York, but it's their choice. And if they wanted to use someone local, that's probably what they would do. So there's no real way to audition for a big award show. Obviously, you need an agent. Without an agent, you will not even be considered. But let me just say one big but, and that is that a few years ago, the MTV Awards were cast off of an online marketing site, and September Day Carter was cast as uh, an announcer for the MTV Awards. And she did it totally in voiceover. She pre-recorded everything. And that came through an online casting company. So for those of you that don't have agents, if you're still doing online, don't lose hope. I think, uh, unfortunately, for the rest of us that are union, the online, the buyers are going online. They are looking for other ways to cast. Well, that's uh, that's that's going to spread things out a lot. Yes. Diana Birdsall asks, what is your favorite chapter in Voice for Hire and why? Wow. Well, Diana, nice of you to ask. Um, Peter Rofay, who wrote Voice for Hire with me, we first got together because he was a New York uh, voiceover artist who was also a coach. And I was living in L.A. And we thought, you know what? East, West. Hey, what a concept. Really? East, West. You know, if we put our heads together, we can probably do something bigger than either one of us would have thought of. And uh, so Peter and I wrote the book and in one voice, the way we wrote it, it sounds like one voice. But if you read the award show chapter, you'll recognize that it's just me. So I guess, Diana, yeah, the award show chapters. Okay. George, you're up. Okay. Uh, Devox, I guess, right? Yeah. Yep, D Vox, one of our regulars here in the chat room. Let me turn up my mic. Uh, virtually all simultaneous translators are women. Simultaneous translators, huh? Mm-hmm. So are women better at reading slash speaking live with a voice in their ear? Forget that term. Why is that? Is there any way to get better at that skill? Is this just something that women tend to be inherently better at? Hmm. You know what? <laughs> When I was when I was working with the company called Hooked on Phonics, you guys remember those commercials? Yep, absolutely. Eight hundred A B C D E F G. Yeah, that was actually my first national commercial that I had ever done in the late eighties for Hooked on Phonics, and I was actually the voice of the product. I taught kids to read. Hmm. Um, it was while I was involved with Hooked on Phonics that. Um, Wait. Sorry, sorry. I sort of lost my train okay. of thought. It is. So I want to get back to the question, though. I want to make sure I'm answering the question. Uh, do about do, trans- do, simultaneous translation. Yeah. So when I was doing Hooked on Phonics, they brought us to Paris, and we went on a an international literacy quest, and we met with all these nations across the world. And of course, I couldn't understand people that were speaking different languages. So you'd sit in UNESCO with a headset and you would hear everything being simul interpreted. I'm assuming that that's what this woman does. Brilliant. Terrifying. The thought of being able to hear something and translate it instantly is amazing. I know that there are male and female translators, but as a woman and as a mom, when you have people talking to you, yet you have a child that needs you, you can deal with your child and you can deal with the questions that are, you know, I think we have the ability to multitask perhaps more than some men. I don't know it's, that it's a talent exclusive to women, but I can see and totally understand why women are com- 
completely qualified to be simul interpreters and uh, best of luck because that's an amazing skill. Absolutely. That's a good question. Bill Lord uh, says, is there one gig that stands out above all others? Was it because it was challenging or fun or anything like that? What made it stand out? Well, of course, my live work really stands in a, a world yeah. by itself because doing the Academy Awards or any live show, it's live. So it doesn't matter what the show is. You just need to stay focused and stay on page. So all of those shows require the most uh, focus in the moment. Entertainment Tonight, though, who has been uh, a client of mine since 1994, um, that's been an amazing relationship. Entertainment Tonight will feed me copy, and I literally am ripping it off the fax machine to my mic, reading live. I don't even know what I'm reading, but somehow I seem to have this gift where I can read things absolutely cold, not be sure what the point of the story is or what I'm saying, and actually I've just said all the words properly. So I don't even know how I can do this job, but those <laughs> are the skills that are involved when you're working with a daily show that has to, um, you know, hit a deadline and, and get up on the satellite. And if they're waiting for a promo and they've got 30 seconds before they hit the satellite and you've got a 30 second promo, you better not screw it up. And uh, no. so I feel like that's something I'm pretty good at. The human yeah. brain can focus on things and block other things out when it has to sometimes. It's amazing. I used to engineer music and I had to, I had to listen to some just terrible music. I mean, it's terrible. And I had to listen to it over and over and over. But I was able to shut that part of the brain off that said, this music sucks. You can't stand it. <laughs> and just the other half of the brain that says, how's the EQ on the snare and all that? and separate the two it's really the right, brain is right. amazing i can do because that. if you stay in the moment then that's all you're focused on is what is happening in this moment Present. and you're not judging you're not uh you know you're not in this space where you're conflicted in any way you have decided this is my job i need to just do this and you know that's the blessing of the work that we do i love voiceover work so much but, and I said it at Voice 2014 in Anaheim as the first woman in history to do all of these live award shows, which is astounding to me still to think it was 1993 and I became the first woman. Uh, so that's uh, amazing to me. But as the first woman, I am not going to be the last woman in the room to know it's time to leave the party. So... That's why I'm working on all these other things that, that fuel my passion, things that I love, because I, you know, uh, I, I know that I only want to be where I'm thriving and where I am most welcome. And I don't want to stay at a party where I'm not wanted anymore. I, and that's not where I'm at. But I do see that that's the future. There are going to be women that are 25 and 27 and 30 years old that are going to be doing the shows that I've done for the last 20 years. And I'm going to say, you go girl or guy, you know, guy could book it, but I want to say, you know, you go. I had my moment and uh, I'm happy for you. Absolutely. Uh, Scott Chambers asks, how do you prepare for a big live announced gig? Do you take any special steps leading up to the event? Perhaps reading the copy and... <laughs> yeah, you think that would be a good idea no, no. to reread that copy. just in passing yeah well you know when you do a live show by the way so you get a book that looks something like this this was this year's tony awards now okay ah, papers are already falling out so here we are we're in the tony's book this is this is what it looks like you've got pages and pages of people and people and stories and scripts it's crazy. You get to live with these books. By the way, I keep every single script that I've ever done. All my Tonys, Oscars, Emmys, AFI, Miss Americas, uh, DNC, whatever show I've done, I'm very proud. What do I do? Scott Chambers, by the way, I love you. I met him in Atlanta. He is an amazing young man who is passionate about this work and he's finding his way. And uh, uh, I hope you're well, Scott. 
I use two things. I use Young Living Organic Essential Oils. This one is called Thieves. The oils are so potent that if you actually get the oils on the label, look, it like eats them up. Yep. So Thieves is a combination of oils that is cinnamon, clove, uh, there's a little bit of lemon, rosemary, all antiviral, antioxidant uh, oils. This one, this is a secret oil of mine. This one is called Clarity by Young Living Organic Essential Oils. And this one I will use. This has like, let me see what notes it has in it. Mm, you can definitely smell the uh, peppermint in here. There are a bunch of uh, uh, oils that are mixed. And it just, I put it on. The thing about organic essential oils, look, Scott, I can go. I drop it right on my tongue. It's a little pungent, a little strong. You can kick it back with water, but that's the brilliance of organic essential oils. You can use it lingual right on your tongue. You can put it on a pulse point here and it will go right into your bloodstream, or you can actually put it in a diffuser and smell it aromatically. And sometimes that can, uh, 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 do what what the oil is is supposed to do for you, whether it's relax you, calm you. So I like organic essential oils. I buy a bottle of rose water and then I put some of my essential oils in it. It smells amazing. I, <laughs> George, you look like you're able to actually enjoy that aroma. <laughs> it's rose oil and it's it's yum yum. Look at you, George was like going. We we we, we I, like I we like rose water and all those essential oil yeah, things here. We yeah. use a lot of it's yeah. It's it's great. So um so I'm a big organic essential oils freak. I'm flying on Thursday and I am very concerned about what's going on in this country. We have horrible diseases that seem to have found their way here. Okay, so what do we do? We have to Make sure when you're flying or when you're traveling or when you are out in these hands, do not touch your face. Don't let it touch your face, your mouth, your nose. Keep your hands away from your face. Wash them as often as possible. It's really the biggest deterrent to getting sick. Um, I don't want to be a freak. I don't want to walk around with rubber gloves and a mask, but I am very protective about my health and I'm kind of a germaphobe. So hmm. Uh, I do carry my oils. I have to put them in a special bag so I can get them cleared through security. And I've actually been admonished on the airplane. Like, who took those oils out? I'm like, seriously, someone's complaining about delicious smelling, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of non delicious smelling things on an airplane. Ew. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, some smart airline should try aromatherapy in one of those. Things. That's Virgin, what I'm Virgin, I bet Virgin America will do it. The yeah, that'll be the first one. Okay, <laughs> one, one last, last question. question from our our great friend Chevy Shelley Avellino in uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, there are more women moving into promo now. What would be your advice to get your foot in the door or their foot in the door? Your foot's already stuck in the door. How would they get theirs in the well, door? I think if you want to do promo, I don't know if you are someone that is union versus non-union. And if you have an agent, if you don't have either of those things, you can go on these online marketing companies. They are looking for uh, voices that are doing this. So you have to find the work at the level that you're working at. Um, and you know what? There are always local jobs. You don't have to do Oscars, Emmys. Like I'm flying to Los Angeles Friday night. Saturday, I will be announcing on the Warner Brothers lot, the Environmental Media Awards. It's non-broadcast, but it's an award show I've done for the last three years. I've always pre-recorded it and they just play me live. But I told them, you know what? I'm going to be in LA. Would you like me to come in live? And they're like, yes, we would love it. So that's a non-broadcast award show. And I would say in your town, in your community, connect with the high-end hotels wherever you live. Let them know that you're an announcer, that you're a voiceover artist, and that if any um, uh, uh, conferences are coming in where they're looking for an announcer, make yourself available as the announcer. I would say start local, 
do a few of these shows because if you actually got cast to do an Oscars or Emmys or Miss America or Miss Universe, you'd probably freak in a real <laughs> Hollywood live situation. <laughs> Local, do it for you know the Kiwanis Club. I mean, it doesn't matter. Help out locally, get the experience of okay, and announce. And once you get that down where they're turning it over to you and it's and it's up to you to make or break whatever it is you need to impart, um, get it down, be proud, do it locally, help the community out and uh, I and and see if someone is recording it. And if they are, if you can get a copy of it and then Absolutely. you'll have it for your archives. And I think that's a good start. Yeah. Always fun to be the MC of some dinner somewhere. Good excuse to wear a tuxedo. Actually, there's a whole story, but we won't get into that. It's a whole nother story. But anyway, I Randy, see how you guys run late now, by the way. Yeah. yeah well, well, it's because we have our, sitting here since 830. Just yeah. Kidding. Well, our audience likes to ask a lot of questions, but I know I don't mind the questions. I'm just saying it's it's, it's getting it's, late here on the East Coast, but I'm good. Okay, but we're 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 getting tired. So we want to thank you so much. We have been so looking forward to having you on the show, and you have been an absolute wellspring of knowledge of some areas I think a lot of people perhaps weren't really familiar with. And we really thank you for for coming on and sharing that with us. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Namaste. I love you guys. I'll see you next month, George, in Florida. Dan, if you want to come on down with your edge buddies, you are welcome. We'll always find room for you. And uh, I, I just want to say that I'm really thrilled. At, you know, 161 uh, uh, video casts, and finally I get on. So finally, yeah. finally, <laughs> it won't be the last time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Randy Thomas joining us from Fort Myers, Florida. Thanks a lot and have a great night. Thank you. You too, guys. All righty. Well, we're going to take one more break here and we're going to clean this all up. Go get your broom. We'll be right back here on East West Audio Body Shop. Don't go away quite yet. VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. You're watching East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. They're nice guys, but every time I'm there, they never let me make water. So I'm going to go make water right now. I'm a grown man. All right, and we're back to clean things up here in East West Audio Body Shop. 161 in the can there, George. Right. We just keep rolling along there. Rolling along. Uh, but one of the things that we that, that helps us get to 161 episodes and to 162, and so you guys see it without other people's commercials that aren't paying to be on our show, uh, we have donors, and you can donate. And who are some of our latest donors to East West Audio Body Shop? We've had donors rolling in from uh, Leslie Diamond. Oh, Leslie, my neighbor. Anthony Gettig. God, An Anthony is... Anthony, he's, he's paying us? He's, he's saying, his, what is the matter with you, man? <laughs> uh, we've got donations from Eric Aragoni, who never seems to miss a week. Gosh, amazing. What a guy. And uh, we've got actually a contribution to the show in regards to production from Mike Martin. Mike sent in a new bumper, so I'll get that into the rotation next time, Mike, I promise. So Mike's a smart guy. He's he's a fledgling voice actor who wants to get more exposure. He's really just kicking the tires of voiceover, but he's plunging in and making these bumpers and little promo things for us, totally making them up and just trying it and just giving it a whirl. Very yeah. brave and, and a very cool way to get a little exposure. So I promise, Mike, we're going to... 
we're going to use you. Uh, some of these uh, spots you're putting together, we really appreciate it. Yes, and thank for the pictures of the of the wine bottles too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> interesting. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Uh, let's see. Our Ewabs Essentials playlist is on our website under our YouTube menu. Yeah, it's starting and to grow. It's starting to grow, and I can tell that there's going to be a couple of great Randy Thomas pieces in there too. Because no doubt. She gave us some great stuff tonight. So go on over to YouTube and look at Ewabs Essentials. If you don't have an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes sometimes uh, to watch East West Audio Body Shop, we do have Ewabs Essentials and they're short little bits, great stuff from our great guests. Just a little bit, enough for you to chew on for five, four, five minutes, and then and, and you can move on with the rest of your day. Mm-hmm. Uh, the podcast. Tell us about the podcast. Well, the, it, we have an audio version of the show, which for long shows like ours, you may prefer to consume it in your car while driving or washing the dishes or taking your morning walk or whatever. So you can consume the podcast version, the audio version from iTunes. Uh, we have a link on our own website to subscribe, of course. And if you use Stitcher, Stitcher Radio to get like NPR and all the other stuff, you can get us on there too. Just type in Ewabs, you'll find us on Stitcher. Excellent. And uh, your wife has a great little business too. For those of you who are doing audiobooks, uh, nothing helps more than someone who proofs your stuff. Oh, yeah. Because you want to be able to, you know, make sure that you get it right before you send it to the publisher. And she's got a great little business called narratorhelper.com where she will she will proof your copy. If you read a chapter, send it out to her, she'll send it back. Great about notations of where exactly the you know the changes need to be. It's a big help. So uh, go over to narratorhelper.com. Uh, yep. and then next week, next week we have our favorite thing to do on this show, and that is our Audio Masters Roundtable, our bestest buddies, Uncle Roy and Cliff Zellman will be with us. Who else is, I think, Steve Varela is going to be with us. My, my, uh, Mike Varela, Steven Mike Varela, Sisk. And Steve Sisk. And we may have Juan Carlos Bagnell, who's a super oh, crazy busy guy. I don't know who I don't know who we're going to have, but we're going to have a lot of people. I can guarantee we're going to have at least six people on this one. Yeah, so. so if you have some questions for all the audio experts and our uh, Audio Experts Roundtable, Send them in to Ewab's Hop at G- for 160 episodes. Ewab Shop. Now it's Ewab's Hop. <laughs> Same email address at gmail.com. Just make a note of that. Right. Uh, but that's going to be a great show. If you've got some questions that you want us all to address about voiceover tech, we will uh, we will talk about that. Oh, yeah. On and October this, 27th. And this just in. I almost forgot to put this in. Uh, a fan of our show and a guy who's become a friend of mine from way up in Alberta, Canada, uh, Chris Heward, is going to come on because he's going to be here in L.A. He is an amazing stand-up comedian, actually. He goes and does the Laugh Factory and these huge venues and kills. He's amazing, but he's getting into voiceover. He's been working on it for, for a few years. and So I, I thought it'd be interesting to have him on because... He can share the story from the perspective of being a comedian and you know an actor, and what the transition's been like for him to get into VO. So I think I think Chris is going to be pretty inspirational. He's a very entertaining guy. That'll be a lot of fun. So we'd like to, of course, thank our sponsors: Harlan Hogan at Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra. Make sure you come see our webinar on Wednesday night about audition audio. And of course, our good friends at Edge Studio, who are providing us with all the bandwidth so you can see Ella and all in the beautiful colors she is wearing. Bandwidth with no ads interrupting the show. Yes. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at eWebs underscore show and subscribe and like our videos. That's all we can ask from you. Uh, let's see, who else do we like to thank? Well, our wives for putting up with this week after week after week after week after week. Uh, Kathy Curridan, uh, our, our condolences to her on the loss of her mother, and uh, we're thinking about you. Anthony Gettig, who does a fantastic job, especially tonight in the uh, chat room with all the questions we had for uh, Randy Thomas. Jack oh, yeah. Degolia for doing the fabulous show notes. Tim McKeon and uh, for doing uh, working on Ewebs Essentials and Lee Penny, who continues to excel at getting our podcast out. And uh, you can get it there, as George said, uh, on all those different different places. And that's gonna do it for us tonight. Not bad. One sixty one in the can.
<laughs> well, and let's let's see how it let's see how it uh, how it renders first. <laughs> Anyway, we'll be back next week. George, fabulous work again, as usual. Thank you, buddy. I'll be back right in time for our Monday show next week. I'm going to New York tomorrow, and I'll be back Monday afternoon, right before the I show. Should. Yeah, I know. VO and TO is next Monday night, so maybe I'll maybe I'll run up there and we'll do the show from there. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? We, we already tried that once, didn't we? Jeez. <laughs> that was that was kind of a wild one. Anyway, that's going to do it for us tonight. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West -West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Have a great week, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to all our Canadian friends and happy Columbus Day for all our Italian friends here in America. Night, everybody. (laughs) Good night. (laughs) Say good night, Ella. Night.